Hello and welcome to Steve's Backyard Bonsai. I've been away for a little while. Uh, we went on a little vacation to the West Coast to visit my son, his wife, and two grandsons who are absolutely beautiful. And uh, we just got back a couple days ago and I uh, disassembled all my water troughs and things that I did so that my trees wouldn't die. And here I am again in my greenhouse getting ready for today's operation. It's not gonna be the one I intended, which is my forest planting, uh, 11 Dawn Redwoods, that's coming up. This is gonna be a repot of a Seju Elm, which I actually bought from Underhill Bonsai. They have beautiful trees, and when I ordered it, I said, make it something special. I think it could end up being something special. I'm gonna show it to you, uh, but I also wanna give you a little update of all of the trees that I've worked on recently and see how they're doing in the greenhouse. All right, the first tree I wanna show you is my wild grape, which is leafing out beautifully. It's going to be trained on this mock vineyard. I added a couple of little pots uh, at the end for scale and for interest. And those will be some sort of accent planting. Uh, here's a little close up of the leaves. There's some purple in them as they're coming up and a beautiful shaped green leaf, nice and small right now. My moss experiment, I don't know if you can see it. There it is. It's starting to green up. My other moss looks good. Get these weird kind of shapes happening, little crop circles. And there's some tiny, 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 tiny little weeds in there. I have all kinds of different moss which I'm going to use on my forest planting, my Dawn Redwood forest. That's looking good. Here's some Blue Atlas Cedar cuttings that I'm hoping will survive and root. This is a little bundle, which I hope to fuse at one point. And if these root, this could become a nice little burning bush. And this is my common bald cypress swamp planting with a little dried creek bed. What I wanted to do with this planting was create a situation where I water it and then I'll flood the creek and that continues to water it for a little while. These little accent plants, which are just weeds, are flowering and they look kind of cute little tall for the scale. Everything's not quite right, but my idea for these forests and the Dawn Redwood forest indeed when I plant it, is I'm gonna to wanna to let the branches develop in the forest, not try to force a tree to look one way and then plant it and have it not be right. So some of these weeds I'll take out, some I'm gonna leave. The uh, Leptonella is still blooming. It's really cute. I just want to give you a look at how I'm watering my bald cypress penjing. I give the top a good soaking, avoiding the avoiding the creek. They're pretty moist from uh, a recent watering, but I did want to show you this. And then to top it off, I think I have it fairly level, maybe favoring, eh, it's pretty level. I flood the creek to its banks. If I get the reflections right, you can see that there's water in there and that stays for a little while maybe about a half hour to an hour. It's completely dry. I 
And I have a little creek. You get a little fisherman in there. I got this guy. He's the wrong scale, though. Need a little bigger guy. I'm looking for maybe 1 to 32 or 1 to 35. He's, I think, 1 to 45. HO scale, maybe. Anyway, that's that. All right, my Tanuki in the corner. That turned out better than I'd hoped. And it's looking pretty good. There is some new green at the tips of the leaves. And I see a little bit of green closer to the trunk. This is going to do really well over time. The Chinese elms in Central Park are all coming into leaf, even this one that I was very worried about, this little one here. All the leaves are coming out and the accent plants, some of them have already flowered and are done. This is a little Thuja forest. Oh, and these are cuttings I picked up on the West Coast. I don't know what they are. Does anybody know what they are? Beautiful, I'll cut the flowers off. I'm hoping that these root. These Thuja cuttings were from trees at my parents' home. They're the same tree as the Tanuki. This is the grapevine that I pulled out of the, um, the planting and didn't plant on. I'm, gonna, I'm hoping that it uh, develops some roots, some better roots here and, and, and a better structure. I have a piece of wisteria vine stuck in between the two trunks where it subdivides just to separate them a little bit. Behind here are the beautiful leaves on my hazel. Hasn't skipped a beat since I repotted it. This is the seiju elm I was talking about. I don't know if you can focus in on the leaves. But they are so tiny and they stay this small. So this is what I'm gonna work on today. I'm gonna to repot this, get it out of the nursery container that it's in and it's leafing out beautifully. Here's a big cluster of leaves from a cut point. Here's a big cluster of branches from a cut point. Those are branches as well up top. And on these wispy shoots, I don't know, the leaves are coming out at the tips and the buds are swelling on these very, very fine branches. But I don't know what this is going to look like yet. So I want to get the roots worked on first and I'm just going to let it grow out. I'm probably going to air layer right here. If not this year, then maybe next. What else? Oh, I have some larches, which were cuttings from the larches in my forest. They're all leafing out. My cherry trio of dancing ladies, I call them. They've got buds on every branch, some more than others. This tree has the most. Uh, I wish this focused better. I'm just doing this on my iPhone. Another Thuja of some type. I thought it was a Chinese juniper because I planted it from seed from what I thought was a Chinese juniper in my town, but it looks like a, another Thuja. I don't have many of these English ivy left. There are only three plants or four plants in here that seem to have life on them, but my wife saved a bunch of them and they're doing fine. Here's a few azalea cuttings. And here are a couple of ferns, like miniature ferns, that I'm going to use as accent plants. I wanted to use them for the bald cypress planting, 
but that turned out to be the wrong scale. So I'll find some place to use these little ferns. They don't get that big and you can keep them trimmed. And that's it for the update on the greenhouse. Uh, I'll get started on the Seju Elm in just a little while. All right, let's get this Seju Elm out of the pot and let's see what's going on inside. Remember this, this tree came from a nursery mail order and any critters that are in here are foreign critters. So I'm going to watch out for that. It does have a little bit of a foul smell. So let me run something around the outside of that, see if I can get this out a little easier. in a trough of water for a week while I was away. And I did want to talk about something that happened while I was away. Some of you may be familiar with the uh, YouTube channel, The Bonsai Balcony and Patricia O'Connor. Anyway, she has a great channel and she does what I do. She has a, a, a bunch of trees that she loves and wants to share her knowledge of them and learn as we go, all of us. So anyway, I knew she lived out in Oakland and my son teaches in Oakland, Oakland, California, for those watching who don't have an intimate knowledge of uh, American geography. We arranged to meet her at the, her place of work. I found out what her hours were. And my wife and I went in to meet her. And this was wonderful. When she, re when she finally recognizes me, she goes, oh, I was just in the process of making something for you. Which was so, so nice. And here's what she was making. Patricia, I've only just deburred it. came yesterday. I haven't sweat soldered it yet. I wanted to show people the components. She made me a soil scoop. I remember watching one of her shows one time, and I grew up in a plumbing environment. My grandfather was a plumber, so uh, the plumbing shop was kind of my daycare at times. Uh, so I grew up with fittings and, and everything. So I said, oh, so I recognized her soil scoop, and I commented about it. Little did I know she heard my comment and, and uh, <laughs> made me this wonderful gift. So Patricia, I will be sweat soldering this. Not as small as that. I'm going to make it as big as I can make it. I love the weight of it. Thank you so, so much. Once again, this is Patricia O'Connor from Bonsai Balcony. I'll put a link, if I remember, I'll put a link to it in the description below. And uh, thank you once again. All right, back to the Seju Elm. I'm seeing very fine roots. I think raking gently is the way to go. I'm going to get the weeds out. There are some very cool turn in the trunk. before I get to the root base, which is a big surprise. It's in a very bonesified nursery soil mix, I'm happy to see. I don't see much in the way of organics. Mostly pumice. I 
that's like pumice and fluorite for um, those of you who've used fluorite. It's a, a, a planting substrate for an aquarium. And it's a clay. And it does very nicely. Okay. I'm going to start to have fun. Not sure what's going on down there yet. I'll try and get a close-up of this for you. Okay, the trunk seems to come down. Let's get rid of this weed. The trunk seems to come down and back around. This trunk goes this way and comes back around. So I don't want to scrape that up too badly. That might end up being visible. It's kind of exciting. I'm going to zoom back out. And it's kind of wet. I regret that. Should have dried it out more, but I wanted to get to something. We had a terrible rain last night. This has been in the greenhouse, but as I said, oh, this is. I got to see what's going on here. Definitely some rotten roots down below. And I'm not seeing much in the way of white tips, although I will announce when I do, or if I do. Yeah, there's some something rotten down there. That's okay, we're getting rid of that. All right, I'm gonna zoom through the comb out process. Yeah, I've got some active roots in there. So I'm, instead of, instead of doing a wholesale chop on this tree, I mean, I'm not sure what to make of this tree yet, but I think I have to work down from the top. Uh, and I'll do that a little bit in front of you, see how it goes. I'm not, I'm still not sure what's sustaining this tree and what could be considered extraneous in terms of root. And I really need to make that determination. I haven't even picked out a pot. I'm probably gonna overpot this for sure. One of the reasons is I have a lot of big pots. <laughs> yeah. I, I think I'm going to be able to find a really nice root base here, but you're going to have to be patient with me. I'm, I'm sure, see there's some very active roots here. So I'm just going to let them hang with the uh, substrate in them. I'll wash that out at some point. And we'll come back to you when this is a little further along. This is the root base unwashed. This is a problem. It's like a big yam. Hope I didn't poke it too much. Might be visible. I don't know. I'm thinking I might want to plant this. I don't know, in kind of a downward angle and maybe cut off some of this on this end and have a Nice little Nabari showing up here. All right, let me wash it off, clean this all up, 
and we'll come back and make all those decisions together. All right, it's all cleaned up. I've got all the aggregate out. I worked with my fingers. It was quite exhilarating. Okay, well, maybe not all the aggregate. <laughs> there we go. Wherever you look, there could be some more. Anyway, right off the bat, there is this root right here that I can take off. So we'll start with that. All right. I may actually try root cuttings this time because I love this tree. Okay. So I'm planting at an angle like this. So having it, or maybe more like that, this could be my nice first radial root right here. And that's a good root plane. This one right next to it starts out nice, but then dives down. I don't want that. Okay, that comes right off. This is too high right here. There's some wispy root hairs here. This is going to be an awkward part of the tree right here. I have to make it a feature. And the soil line will probably be like right here. All right, with that in mind, there's nothing I can do about what's going on here. As a matter of fact, there's some, there's some rotten root material here, so that'll be underground. I really got to deal with that side. Well, there's more, there's more to take off underneath. Got a big, big chunk here, and it's kind of the same, the same root. Wonder if I should saw that. I don't want to ruin my tools. <laughs> there is aggregate everywhere, but as a blessing to that, Underhill Boneside Nursery is a bonsai nursery. And they plant in a gritty soil, which makes it possible to clear out. And I'm going to work on this just a little bit more so I can get a clean, a clean cut. I might have this out of view, but hopefully you're hearing the aggregate coming out of there. I don't want to cut through that and dull my tools or chip them. There's a fair amount of aggregate still there. I don't seem to be damaging the bark, but I'm kind of manhandling it. Okay. Can I safely take off a little bit more? Yes. The problem is I got to take off a lot more. So I got to go a little at a time. You know what? I have a really old Corona that I'm going to use for this. This is a new one. Okay. That helped. Oh, can I go further? 
Oh dear. Yeah. Gonna. I take this big, big, big old root off. What am I doing? This tree has plenty of vigor. Okay. Surely I don't need all of this down here. Gonna be fun editing this. gentler over here because there are some roots no. I don't need this I don't need this this is This is kicking back, but I'm going to keep this as an active root. I'm just going to shorten it. More aggregate. All right, this comes up. crosses over. This comes up as well. All right, I'm really fixing up this root base based on how I am going to plant it. I think I can take some of these larger roots off of here. I don't know if you heard that. There's a piece of aggregate going into my scissors. I hate that. All right. I've got a flat, weird root base that I'll try to fix up every time I repot this. And speaking of, I guess I gotta find a pot. All right, so I've chosen this mica pot. It's a nice pot, and I'm hoping that this will be a nice tree. And I'm planning on planting it at an angle like this, with this being the front, because I'm hoping some of these surface roots develop. This I'm just gonna have to work on over time. There is some rot there. This is a little soft right here, so I'm expecting that things will change over time. So let's get this thing planted. We'll get a base layer of soil in there. And as I mentioned, the weather has not been so great. And I've been meaning to add something to this substrate. I want to, I want to add perlite to it before I do my large planting. Got some larger pieces of yew bark. All right, 
Let's see if it can position this the way we want it. I want to go down on this angle. I want this to be kind of a forward branch. The tree kind of bends forward, comes back a little bit. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with the tree long term, but if it's going to be wanting to grow in that direction, I probably want to plant it more on this side of this pot. That looks like a reasonable height. Right about there. All right, let me spread out these roots as radially as possible. Glad I saw that one. I'm gonna be a little close on this side. Got the roots arranged. Let me just double check the positioning in the pot. Yeah, I think I like that better. All right, so. When I finally get the right pot for this, everything will be fine. But for right now, this is where we're going with this. We use the big scoop and then switch to the little scoop. And at which time I will be Pining for my new soil scoop. Thanks again, Patricia. I don't know how you knew that would be great. See, these soil scoops, they're accurate, but they don't hold a lot. The other one's going to hold probably twice as much. I'm going to start working that soil in. Just work your way around. You kind of know where those roots are. The rest you can feel. You're letting the substrate work its dry way, which is what you want, into every nook and cranny so that every bit of the root is cradled by substrate top and bottom and all the way through to the tips. So I'm going to get this on a turntable, make it a little higher up for me. The noise on a glass turntable has been an annoyance to both me and some of my uh, viewers. Is this what I want? It is coming forward, but is that too much forward? You know what? I like it enough. I'm leaving it. Working the soil in everywhere. And I find this thin chopstick, I know people use a thicker chopstick for this, but I find a thin chopstick, and I wish I had something that replicated this in steel, 
The only steel chopsticks I've ever found have a very blunt tip. But I like the point on these chopsticks because it really helps me feel what's going on. And the tree is rather sturdy in the pot, which is nice. Now, like I said, I'm gonna want roots to develop here. So I'm gonna pile the soil up a little bit further on this side. Now, I'm not going to prune today, but I am gonna study the structure of this tree and kind of plan out what I hope to prune off in the future. I think this tree is going to be very happy in a well, well draining soil. So I'm going to pile it a little bit higher around the tree and work it down to just below the lip of the pot. This piece of wood on top of my turntable came from the thrift store. It's the top of a stool that didn't have any legs. Go watch Madame Bonsai. She says, put the heel of your hand to the outside and just make a little bit of a lift there so that the substrate does not run over the top. Very common sense advice. Very well told. The Bonsai community out there is fantastic on YouTube and Facebook, elsewhere. But on YouTube especially, I'm really enjoying the camaraderie that we're finding. All right then, I'll get this watered and that'll be it for today. Welcome to your new home, little Sage Realm. dispense with this mask now. All right, this is coming out the drainage holes now. I'll let it sit for a little while, give it a little bit more water. And that's my Seiju Elm. Looks good from this side. And it looks good from this side. I actually think I like the side that goes away from me better. Well, let's see how it looks. What do you think? I'll give it a spin now. That might be the front. left side of the tree. I have green all the way down to here. Part of me says cut this back and let it bifurcate. Another part of me says 
look about look at this branch further up on the tree that should be thinner than this so i might just let this one extend this season and maybe cut some vigor out of this you can see it's growing new branches here i probably will select one or two of those and let this one grow out maybe get a little thicker hopefully as thick as that and that's the back or the front <laughs> and the right side and back to the back or the front all right thank you for keeping me company in my backyard